Hello there. Thank you for joining this Power BI session. As you know, we are going to have this for 15 minutes, followed by question and answer. If you have any questions anytime during the session, click on this icon and ask questions. You can ask questions anonymously if you want, and if required, put the slide number as well. That gives me some context. So we have been focusing on the entire Office 365 platform, and today it is Power BI's turn. We are going to discuss four broad topics and go into a little bit of detail of each so that I give you a balanced perspective about various aspects of Power BI. Typically, when it comes to any BI tool, there are similar steps, so I'm just going to summarize them. We won't go into details of each during this session, maybe sometime later. We have to import data. Typically, we have to clean it up. Shaping means creating relationships, defining data categories and so on, and then we create dashboards, interactive visuals, share it with each other and finally act on it. So what really is analytics? There are thousands of tools for analytics, but at a very simple level, we must know why we are doing all this, which is independent of any tool we use. So when we talk about analytics, we are trying to learn something, obviously. What are we learning from? Most of the data which we get is historical, so we are learning from the past. Whatever we learn, we can't change the past. So what's the point? The point is to learn from the past and try to improve the future to our advantage or in our favor. So in order to improve the future, that's a very simplistic non-technical definition. But you will notice that there is a gap. When we say I'm learning useful things, how many are we talking about? Typically, the answer is in practical terms, how many reports do we create from a given set of data? So in some case you create two reports, some cases you make four, 12, doesn't matter. There's always a number, am I right? I'm not worried about that number, but well, the question is whatever that number is, why do we stop at that number? Because someone stops asking us that many reports. So if someone asks for 12, we deliver 12 reports that someone could be boss, regulator, government, customer, whoever it is. The question is, if you made n number of reports, let's say 12, isn't there a 13th equally useful thing lying in the data? Maybe yes, maybe no. You will never know unless you try to find it. So why try to create few things? Why try to learn few things? Ideally, how many things we should try to learn from the data? This simple question has never been asked in the world of BI or business intelligence for so many decades. So the simplest commonsensical answer is we should try to learn as many things as possible, all possible things. And that's the definition of analytics. It's a very simple but very powerful definition. As we go along, you will understand how this is implemented in Power BI and Excel. So typically there are three steps. Let's simplify. Get the data and of course you want to spend all the time and energy on analysis. But in real life, what happens? You see a gap there. In that gap, we are spending inordinate amount of time, effort and energy in cleaning up data because it's never the way you want. And that's absolutely inefficient. And if you remove that inefficiency somehow, then you get extra time to analyze the data. That means you can learn more from the data. That means you can act on it. If you don't learn more, that means it's a loss of opportunity. If you do learn more and more, then you are act, going to act on it. That means it's a competitive advantage. So let's do how to do data cleanup better. Now, before we understand data cleanup better, there's another problem. There is no standard simplistic definition which says this data is clean and this is not clean. It's all subjective, so let's make that easy. Here is a 10 
item checklist of what is clean or good data. Go through it quickly. You may or may not understand details of each. During Q&A, maybe I can handle some of these questions. In Excel, we have covered this in more detail because when it comes to data, whether it is CSV, Excel or a database, doesn't really matter. This checklist remains the same. So in case the data is not clean, instead of cleaning it up manually, we must use Power Query. I would say apart from the analytical capabilities, this is the single most important powerful tool which is incorporated inside Power BI. In fact, get and transform data in Excel is exactly same as Power Query in Power BI. So what does this allow you to do? It allows you to get data from 100 plus different data sources, including many of them which are non Microsoft. All these technically are called connectors and all these connectors are free. Remember. Some of the data may be on premise, in which case you need a data gateway to fetch it. All this is running on the desktop. There is a Power Query online version as well. So what happens when you get the data and clean it? For example, I'm just showing you sample data. One piece which is in green is transactional data and I have two master tables. One is categories of business and countries. Using this simplistic data, typically in Excel, you would have created multiple Excel pivot tables and charts, sort of a um, manually created dashboard. Now with the same data using Power BI, we can create a much more sophisticated and much more useful report. Now remember, I am not saying Excel is a substitute for Power BI. It is not Excel versus Power BI. It is Excel raised to Power BI. So if you use both, the amount of analytical insights you get increase exponentially. That's why I put the Power BI icon where an exponent is. So Excel raised to Power BI. That is the power you have. So with the same data, within really literally few minutes, you could create this kind of dashboard. And of course, it is interactive. So if I click on any of the items, it becomes a filter and it cross filters everything. As we go along, you will see more of it. So it's visual, it's interactive, unlike static reports which we are used to in Excel. Of course, mobile is a very important part of our life, so the same report can be readjusted for mobile form factor as well while retaining the interactivity. What kind of visualizations? Of course, some are similar to Excel, but there are many which are new. The left side shows you visualizations which are available as a part of Power BI. Some of them you already know, some of them you may not know. So some of them are common. The top row probably is similar to Excel, but there are some which are special. As you start learning it, you will learn more. But again, this is not a limited set. In Excel, a new kind of chart gets added once in three years or something like that. Here we have external or third party or even Microsoft created custom visuals. There are hundreds of them and they can be really, really useful. You must explore these and find those which are relevant to your business context. So having done that, now what happens? Here is something which is a very common problem. I am in a presentation. I am showing a chart to my boss. This is in PowerPoint. Data is in Excel. And boss says, OK, what happened between March and April? Why did the revenue go down? And the answer is I will get back to you. That is inefficiency. That is analytical inefficiency. So in Power BI, what do you do? You right click on April and say explain the decrease. I may have many types of data, but it understands all the columns I have and it tries to find which of those columns is actually causative and then it gives me all the columns in descending order of causality or influence on that decrease. By default, it creates a waterfall chart, but it can also show the same data as a scatter or a stack bar chart as well. This is just one. There is a scroll bar. You can go and look at all other parameters as well. What does that mean? 
we are going to hear. I will get back to you lesser and lesser. Similarly, during the presentation or review, you can drill down. So if I want to click on a year, I can go to the year and go at quarter level or drill it down further to months and days. And of course, I can drill it in reverse order as well. So this is out of the box. No programming is required. In addition, apart from allowing you to plot your data on a map without having lat longs, it also allows you to do drill through. For example, here I have multiple states and performance by state. Now for each state, I want to see details. So rather than stuffing this screen itself with details, what do you do? You go here and say drill through by state. And then what happens? It goes to the next level and you have to define what happens in the state later and then it will actually show you what is to be done. So let me go to the next slide and show you what happens. Now it is going to show you that particular state. So now it is showing you details of that state. You can understand, come back and then maybe choose another state. In this case, I am choosing another state, Rajasthan. Again, I'm doing drill through. Now you'll get the similar kind of interactive dashboard, but this time the filter is Rajasthan. So this is called drill through. Similarly, if you just want that mini dashboard live, you can have a more enriched version of tooltip as well. So this is a tooltip. Normally tooltip would show only 2.4K and July, which is anyway visible. What is that tooltip doing? This is a more rich tooltip and when I move it across different bars, notice the tooltip content is changing dynamically. So this is another very useful interactive feature. Now using AI, if you have multiple parameters and you have qualitative data like feedback, you want to know why am I getting poor feedback? Then we have a very special visual called key influences. So what is it saying? If my number of transactions are decreasing, the channel being a dealer is the constraint and then the category being purifier is the constraint. So it is giving you influencing power of each of your data parameters on the parameter which you are currently looking at, which in this case is the volume of transactions decreasing. Another way of interactively exploring the data, which is impossible unless you really struggle with a pivot table, is called decomposition tree. This is very useful for root cause kind of analysis. So you start with the highest thing, total revenue, and then you break it down by whatever you want. So in this case, I have broken it down by years. Now I want to break down one of those years by something else, which is the channel of transaction. Then I want to break it down further by another one called type of uh, consumer customer type, consumer corporate government. Like that, you can interactively go and explore how each parameter is broken down further by various columns in the data. For simplistic forecasting, we also have a forecast feature which basically uses linear regression to forecast. It gives you upper and lower bound as well. This can be customized. There's another very nice visual which is like a stack bar chart. It's called a ribbon chart. If you forget those things which are connecting to each, it's still a stack bar chart. It looks confusing initially, but look at it again. Look at blue mobile phones. What is it saying? Mobile phones was contributing third in Malaysia, but in India, mobile phones are first. So it actually shows you ranking along with stacking. Very nice and very useful visual. And it shows you how across items that ranking has changed because it's color coded. Ribbon chart. Of course, we have maps. I've already talked about it. Various types of maps. There are in fact seven different types of maps. Some of them are free. Some of them require you to have paid subscription. For example, with COVID cases, you must be seeing a lot of visualizations on new channels and uh, WHO sites and so on. Those use ArcGIS, which is a very sophisticated GIS system. The free version of that is also available in Power BI. Now, 
you will say, OK, all this is good, but I finally want to desperately put it in PowerPoint. Do not do that. This guy gives you something similar to PowerPoint, but without taking away the interactivity. So this is called bookmarks. You go to your dashboard, look at what you want to show and what order you want to show and save it as a bookmark. And then you can actually run it like a full screen presentation. So this is the first bookmark. I'm showing my industrial business. Look at the bottom. It shows you the bookmark name and on the right side you see next previous like a slideshow. The next slide is consumer business. Notice the dashboard changed. It is the same page I'm using. Technically you could use another page as well as a part of bookmark. Third one is I'm only show showing Southeast Asia countries. Fourth bookmark is across Asia how things are happening. You decide what bookmarks you decide the order, so it's best of both worlds. The convenience of a PPT and the interactivity of Power BI. Of course, you can also use pictures. How do you incorporate pictures? Pictures should be on a website and you put the URLs and that column is converted to a data category called image URL and then you use them like this. So right now cameras is the filter. If I click on some other product, now I have clicked on air conditioners. Notice that has become a filter, so it becomes a full fledged part of your. Similarly, when people are watching or looking at it on their own, this can be shared on a tablet, mobile phone. People can annotate and put comments as well, so there can be a focused, informed discussion which can go on amongst people. When it comes to sharing, there are multiple ways of sharing. If you are using the free version, the only thing you can share is the physical file which gets created on Power BI desktop, which is the PBX file, which is not a very good idea because soon the file size is going to grow. And if you share the file, the other party needs Power BI desktop and they can see all the raw data as well. The correct way of doing that is to publish it on the Power BI portal and then you can share it with email, website or even embed it as a part of your application. The last three don't require the other party to have any special software. They can do all the interaction on a browser. Also, it gives you a very sophisticated role based security by just defining roles and defining a filter condition for each role. So I'm saying when someone who is a VP corporate sales logs in, that person will get only transactions where the type column contains corporate. Like that, you define and even from CSV data, you can have role based security without creating a cube, which is really, really commendable. So here is the summary before after. What are we talking about? Earlier we used to struggle in Excel with this kind of thing, import and then go and clean up every month. By the way, the repetitive finally clean up, put it in PowerPoint, send as attachments again. Import again, clean up again send very bad idea. This is how typical life is in Excel. Now compare that with this. We are going to import and clean up data, but using Power Query, which is fast automated and we'll create the dashboard and share it once and for all as a link. Now next time when the data comes, you just refresh. Power Query will repeat the cleanup. This is very important because it saves you time second time onwards completely and then Nothing has to be shared because the link remains the same. So this is really digital transformation in the true sense of the phrase. Now another very nice feature is natural language query. So I just said give me top three countries by sales. It understands what to do and gives you the report. Similarly another one. You type or BI gives you. <coughs> Excuse me. So now remember I told you this particular slide learn all possible things. How is that implemented? So when you publish something on Power BI, it gives you a facility called Quick Insights where without you telling Power BI what reports you want, Power BI analyzes all the data using AI and gives you what Power BI thinks are statistically interesting or significant pieces of data. Right now I'm showing you only a small portion of that quick insights. Remember this is still based on the three Excel tables we saw and it is showing you many nice things which typically you would have missed. For example, it is telling you in this. Uh, this one. That. 
transaction amount is going upwards. That means there is an upward trend for fridges. Then on that pie chart kind of thing, it is saying in country Singapore. Online is doing very well and so on and so forth. And every year, every month, whenever the data changes, it's a good idea to go to quick insights because then you are actually learning hopefully all possible useful things from the data so that you can act in a more informed manner. All right, we are. Going to go to the next slide now. This is more of a comparison. I'm not going to read out all this, but just to position Excel and Power BI correctly. I'm showing you this. Just go through it if you understand well and good. Otherwise, you can ask questions at the end of it. One thing requires explanation elimination of VLOOKUP because in Power BI, you can have multiple tables and just create a relationship like in a database. So unwanted VLOOKUP is completely eliminated. There is also another very important thing called DAX language, which is basically data expression language. It has 100 plus Excel like functions, but they are specific to Power BI and they help you create really complex calculations with one or two lines of code or functions. It is a little difficult to learn, but once you learn it, you suddenly increase the level of analytics you can do in life. Especially useful for time intelligence because all the time we want reports like same period last year what happened or across three months this year similar period three years back what happened and so on and so forth. You also want opening balances, closing balances and various kinds of roll ups. So it does all that like YTD MTD with just one function. Now when you evaluate Power BI and probably some of you are already using it, but some of you are not. These are the common mistakes. Don't do these mistakes. I have intentionally created a negative slide, so exact reverse is what you should do. So please include a decision maker in the team. Otherwise that we evaluation has no meaning. Use sample data for learning, but when you're evaluating, use real data, but don't use data which is too large because then you will not know exactly what is happening. Don't try to recreate reports which you're creating in Excel. Use Excel for that. Use Power BI for things which you can't do in Excel and are useful. The same way I would say for visualization, don't use a visualization just because it is there. Use it based on the relevance. Finally, what is the real positioning of Power BI? And this is a very common mistake. Typical paginated reports which we get IT creates users use. Data warehousing, SSAs, cubes, all those standard sophisticated BI tools IT creates, users use. Power BI should be used by users and reports also should be created by users, thereby relieving IT of that job. Typically what I've seen happening is IT takes over Power BI and it becomes another data warehousing exercise and people are still struggling in Excel. That's not the right way of using Power BI. Empower users, give them clean data and leave them alone. That's the best way. And finally, Power BI is a part of Power Platform. So Power BI works very well with Flow, which is Power Automate and Power Apps. So in Power BI, if there is a KPI which says profitability, if it goes below 10%, you want a mail to be sent to the department head. That kind of automation can be done very easily with Power Automate. So what is the call to action? Even if you are using Power BI, first exploit the Power BI desktop fully. Understand its capability. Not just the analytics, but also the data cleanup. Many people use other BI tools, use Power BI just for cleanup because that's the most sophisticated tool where you can do very good data cleanup without writing scripts. Then once you have got enough business benefit, then you think of paying for the pro version because most people have that unnecessary hindrance in their mind that I have to pay Microsoft $9. Don't bother, first get the benefit. Very soon you will realize that the time you are spending in cleanup was worth $9 in a week and then obviously it creates the justification for purchasing pro. If you really want AI and very large dedicated capacity, then you can also buy premium 
and if you have very confidential data, you don't want to put it on cloud. Everything in Power BI, which I showed you, is available on premise as Power BI server. So that was a quick overview of Power BI. Now we will take questions. I know I went 10 minutes ahead, but I had to cover all this. So now I'll take questions. You know how to do it. All right, I'm going to take questions in the order in which they came. Just give me a second. It's taking a while for my screen to refresh. Just give me a second. While you are seeing that, I'm going to read out other questions. Can VB code macro be useful in Power BI like Excel? No, VB does not work in Power BI, but when you are cleaning up data using Power Query, the steps which you are following are automatically recorded like what we used to do in a macro, and when you refresh the data, those steps automatically run. There is a language called M, M for mashup, and the code automatically gets generated. So if you want to do more sophisticated cleanup, you can of course use the code, learn the language and customize it even further. So Power BI, Power Query language is called M. So question, can we do explaining increase, decrease or drill down inside a running presentation? You can do everything which I've shown in a bookmark based presentation. It's fully interactive. All the features which I showed you are available. So that's what I'm saying. Don't even think of putting this in PowerPoint, although if you have a dashboard, it does allow you export to PowerPoint, but obviously it's a static thing. It does give you a hyperlink so that it can invoke the web based version during the presentation, which you should keep open proactively because you know there are going to be questions outside the PowerPoint. All right, next question. If we create a dashboard with quick insights and other powerful analysis and send a link to employees, can they use this feature on lower end PCs? Yes, absolutely. They don't need a PC. They're, even a thin client will do. If you have a PC with just operating system, even Linux will do with a browser and internet. That's it. That's the whole idea of Power BI publish, publishing on browser. If it was Power BI PBX file you are sending, then obviously they need client to be rich. Everything when published is on browser, on tablet, on mobile, anywhere. Next question. Can I use data gateway to connect local database with E3 license to use online? I don't need to share others. Absolutely, you can do it with no license of Office 365 also. Go to powerbi.microsoft.com, register using corporate email ID. If I remember correctly, they don't allow Hotmail Gmail IDs to be used. So some corporate ID, then you get Power BI desktop for free. And wherever you download that Power BI desktop, next to it there is data gateway. And data gateway need not mean a local database. It could be a local CSV file which comes and lies on your desktop PC or laptop. It doesn't matter. You can even schedule the refresh on a simple CSV file on a simple PC. No other tool gives you this kind of sophistication so well. All right. Another question. Can I exclude selected charts not to filter? Absolutely. When you go to Power BI desktop, there is something called manage interaction. So typically what happens when you go to a dashboard, let me try to show you what happens. I'm not going to show you the exact process, but I will just show you what I mean by that. Give me a second. So 
So if there is a dashboard, what happens is when I click on something, when I click on anything for that matter, um, let's say I click on industrial, this becomes the filter. Everything will get filtered by industrial. Now, if I don't want something to get filtered, I have to do, of course, that at design time, I go to manage interactions and exclude visuals which should not participate in the interaction. So that's the idea. Manage interactions is the dialogue or the menu. You should use the latest version, by the way, because Power BI is a very, very fast evolving product. For last three years, every month they add at least 40 features. So if you are a couple of months back updated, then you're already way beyond time. So what you should be doing is every month update. So if you install Power BI desktop from Windows, uh, Windows App Store or Windows Store as it is called, then it is auto updated. All right, any other questions? OK, next question. Do you have Power Query related videos available on your YouTube channel? Yes, I do have and on my blog, which is efficiency365.com, there are at least uh, 80 articles on various aspects of Power BI, including Power Query. Okay, another question, can the Power BI free edition allow you to deploy online? Yes, it does allow you to deploy online, but for sharing you will have to pay. If you want to publicly share it, there is something called show on web, but then it is public data and people can interact with that data live. So that's something we should do for some dashboard you want to publish for all customers, but most reports you want to choose whom you want to share it with. That is where you'll have to pay for Power BI Pro. All right. Any more questions? Okay, next question. As a developer, I need pro license to share a dashboard and viewers need special license? No, as a developer, most probably you'll be using the embedded part of Power BI, where you will embed a dashboard as a part of your uh, HTML somewhere in your development environment. So users or viewers don't need a license. So look at the license for Power BI dashboard embedding and then you will know the details. Oh, when to decide Power BI Pro or Premium? Uh, I am not a licensing person, so I can't answer that correctly. You'll have to talk to some Microsoft person or someone who understands licensing to do that. But I think uh, even if we say Power BI is for commoditizing BI, the creators need the license. Consumers don't need the license. So if you are 100 plus user organization, start with a set of power users. IT and database team should train them, make some useful dashboard, see how proactively that is happening. I think to start with, use Power BI Pro for customers who have probably 1000 plus customer users, Power BI premium makes more sense because then it's a single premium license and unlimited users for viewing. OK, let's. All right, so I guess there are no more questions coming. So as you know, 
tomorrow we are going to talk about project and in order to just make it complete after tomorrow sometime i am going to publish another video on visio and how to put all these tools together of course all of them will be available on the website i will give you the url immediately after this so thank you shesham manindo and gs who have been working for two weeks to make this possible as you know my videos are going to be available on my efficiency 365 youtube channel that's the playlist it's pl pl for playlist and one of the videos i created 5 years back i think is really really popular on youtube please have a look that is the link or if you go to my channel anyway you will see it as the topmost video so for a 10 minute walk through which actually shows you step by step with the ui how to go from raw data to a dashboard and many other related things let me just check if there is no more question no more question so that's it for now and see you tomorrow and thank you for supporting me in this venture see you bye bye good day and take care